All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're talking about pruning fig trees. And in particular, we're gonna talk about how pruning fig trees affects the ripening date of your fig tree. So if you're living in a short season climate, the Northeast, Pacific Northwest, just somewhere in the North that's kind of cold and you don't have many frost-free days, you're gonna wanna listen to the information in this video because if we do pruning, the wrong kind of pruning, we can actually have our fig tree ripen two weeks later. Now, here's the difference. We have one branch here in front of me. This is my Ronde Bordeaux fig tree. Look at the difference between this branch on the Ronde Bordeaux and this branch on the Ronde Bordeaux. Look how far along this is compared to those other new shoots that are coming out. This is because I had pruned away the apical bud. I didn't prune it away on this particular branch. You can see the apical bud is the highest bud on our fig trees, and it just continues growing if we don't remove it. And that's exactly what you see here. We have now on this particular bud, this one branch that's forming, we have larger leaves, we have more leaves, and we're gonna end up ripening our fruits in my opinion, about two weeks earlier. And this is a, a phenomenon I've seen pretty much for years, and you can observe it on almost all of my fig trees. Especially if you compare the trees that are pruned versus the trees that are not. But also in this case, I think is really writes the point home where you have a Ronde Bordeaux like this one, where I pruned some of the apical buds, like these branches here and some of the branches I did not prune the apical bud. So here's another example on the same tree. Pretty good progression here in development. Apical bud's intact. Another branch right here where the apical bud isn't. It's quite a big difference. Um, and that difference that starts like right now, here's another example down there. This branch is has the apical bud intact, these do not. And so, like I said, this little difference now, even though it's the beginning of my growing season for the fig trees, it's actually a big difference later on. Now, if you paid attention to the pruning video we put out a few weeks ago, we talked about in that video how actually I did prune some of the apical buds of my fig trees on purpose. And the reason I did that was, especially in this case here, this is a, a long de oot fig tree. It means long of August. And it is a, uh, a fig for whatever reason. I don't know if it's the variety itself, maybe the development of the tree over time, but it is, has these branches that typically are quite long and lanky, and there isn't a lot of branching. And what that does for this tree, because we have fewer branches, we end up getting larger leaves. And those larger leaves, I have a theory that it produces larger fruits. And you can actually see the same phenomenon happen in uh, low cordon systems or Japanese espaliers where commercial growers in Asia typically use that system and it encourages the trees to produce larger fruits. The same thing's been happening on this long de fig, but the problem is it's already a gigantic fig. And for people like myself in humid areas, the bigger the fig is, the worse it performs in humid areas. Now, if you're in a dry place like Southern California, <laughs> you know, uh, you're in West Texas, you're in Arizona, well, big figs are great and you get to enjoy those at a higher quality than myself. But this long de oot fig doesn't really produce high quality figs here consistently because they're just too big. So the way to slow this tree down and to have smaller figs is to get more branches. And the only way I could do that because this tree has such an apical dominance to it, these long, lanky shoots, if I leave the apical buds intact, the branches just typically continue growing up in long shoots straight up in the air. But if I remove the apical bud, which is where the dominance is within trees, that apical dominance, there's a hormone, I believe it's called auxin. Once you remove that apical bud, the tree now has a signal that says, all right, well, I gotta go reach for the sunlight. And now 
these buds that are trying to compete for that sunlight to reach the highest point possible on the tree. This is in most trees, not all trees, most shrubs, woody plants. I think it's maybe even uh, in herbaceous plants as well. Uh, and so now this fig tree has put out all these different shoots. In particular, this one here, I really wanted to see it. And now we have sort of the branching that we desire. We didn't get, ex we didn't get it exactly right. I'm gonna touch on that in a minute because there's other ways to get branching. But this is the nuance of what I wanted to discuss, that pruning fig trees has such a different impact. And there isn't, it's not a one and zero game. It's not all or nothing. It's not black or white. And most things in life, as you guys probably are aware, it, there's nuance. It's, it's just not as simple as if I prune my Rondé Bordeaux really far back or prune it in the way that I don't recommend, it's still gonna do really well. I mean, look how many branches have formed on this tree. And the more branches we can have, the more shoots that are forming, typically the more figs we're gonna get. So in some situations, maybe pruning the apical bud on a particular tree like this Long de Oot, well, we're gonna net ourselves more figs rather than maybe less figs that are of a larger size. Um, so it's just, you know, there's a lot to this. So one of the other things I want to mention because this tree over here has a similar issue and I didn't I did not prune it uh, prune these apical buds like I did on the long to this is called Brianzolo Rosso I left the apical buds intact I did prune out if you guys recall this main shoot that was in the center of the tree shading out the trees behind it we took this out and it's the trees actually responding exactly how I said it was going to respond this branch here that was really small is getting some nice shine and light. These branches here are doing well. Um, and there's actually some activity of water shoots that we'll see later in the season of where we actually made the cut. There's three new shoots trying to form right there. Um, but because this tree has a similar issue, it's, it does grow, I would say, more vertically, lankier growth, less branching. Although I, I would argue this tree actually has a pretty good form. I did not prune away those apical shoots, and I would say at this point, it's probably too late to do so. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. This is just for the, you know, keep it in the bank for next year. But what we can do right now to encourage branching is there's one thing called notching. Someone had mentioned that to me. I don't really do that technique. Instead, I think what achieves a similar result, but I think is better and healthier for your fig tree is just bending the branches <laughs> and i know that i've said this so many times in the spring probably the most important thing we can do with our figs guys is making sure they have the right form pruning them properly and it's all about that sunlight maximizing the sunlight and the best way we can do that is putting these branches on a horizontal angle opening up the center if i have a branch like this the sun hits this part of the branch as soon as I open it up like that, well now the sun's hitting this part of the branch and this part of the branch. So now all the buds on this lower part of the branch are gonna activate. They know there's sunlight there and they're gonna grow and they're gonna make use of that sunlight. The trees are advantageous. I don't have to you know, um, tell the tree essentially what to do. Uh, the tree knows what's best for it. So if I just give it the right tools, if I push it a little bit in the right direction, that's all we need. And that's pretty much as basic of a pruning lesson that you can not just apply to fig trees, but pretty much every other fruiting plant. I do the same thing around all, all my fruiting plants in the yard, guys, all the species of trees I have. And I try to make sure that they're maximizing the sunlight and reaching outwards to get that as much as possible it does wonders for the hormones, does wonders for your fruit quality, the actual quantity of fruits. I can go on and on and on. But there it is. Thanks for watching. You enjoyed this? Check out my blog. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button for me. I appreciate it. We'll see you guys for the next one. Take care.